Welcome everybody to this numeracy resource designed to develop the numeracy skills of learners working in the engineering field. The content of this particular resource is going to be looking at understanding how the area of a circle is found and we recommend that this resource should be viewed with developing a vocabulary of circles, developing an understanding of area and developing an understanding of pi and each of these is also available in this set of resources. The intention of this resource is to transition learners from understanding how the area of a parallelogram is found to understanding how the area of a circle is found. And I'll tell you the truth, a lot of people don't realize this, but they're actually very similar. So the formula for working out a rectangle is base times height, and that actually relates directly to the formula for working out the area of a circle. But what most people are unaware of is that you can work out the area of a circle without the formula. And doing this helps people understand how the formula works. The instructions for this activity, number one, we're going to have learners re-articulate their understanding of area and then going to reformat a circle into a rectangle and then we're going to link the rectangle formula to the circle formula. We're going to be using these paper circles and at the end of this session I'll show you a quick hack of how to do this really easily so you don't have to sit up all night cutting them out. Uh, you're also going to need rulers for the learners and a pen for each of the learners. Now, it's really simple. First of all, you hand out the circle to each of the learners and you simply ask them to fold it in half. Now, once they're folded in half, uh, what I like to do is I like to ask them to rule a line directly down the diameter. Once you've ruled the diameter, you can have discussion about what this is, um, you know, in relation to the circumference and so on. But the next thing I ask the learners to do is fold it in half again. So, okay, so now the learners have got something like this. This is a great conversation piece in terms of discussing the diameter and the radius, you know, and what each is. Once we've got that established, the next point is, one more time, fold in half, half again, and the final time, one more time. And so now we have these nice sectors. Ask the learners to open it and to roll two more lines, one from here to here and one directly across here. Okay, so that's step one. Next thing you do is you're gonna ask the learners to cut out each of those sectors and arrange them on their desk. So the learners are arranging these sectors on their desk and the idea is they're trying to make something that approximates a rectangle. And at first they're a bit unsure about this and there's a few experimental ideas that go on. Uh, I like to have them do it in groups and discuss it. And eventually, as you can see, they begin to figure out that this is probably the best way to try to make the rectangle. And as you can see, they slowly put it together. Uh, and the next thing to ask them, of course, is does this look like a rectangle? And have a discussion about that. What is a rectangle? What does it look like? What is a parallelogram? And most of them will say, uh, it's a pretty poor looking rectangle. It's rectangular, but uh, those curved sides are a bit of a problem. The next strategy is to ask the learners to cut each of their sectors in half. Uh, sometimes I have these pre-cut, but often I'll just give them a pair of scissors and ask them to cut each of their sets in half and then rearrange them again to make a rectangle. And as you can see, uh, when they begin to rearrange the rectangle, the curved sides that were making it look not rectangular are slowly going away. And, uh, and so as you cut them thinner, it becomes more and more rectangular. And the question is, of course, once they've arranged this, and they realize that it's just as long as the other one, and the radius is the same, the height is the same, if we continue to cut these in half, uh, what would happen to those curved edges? And the truth is those curved edges would gradually diminish, and if we cut them in half an infinite amount of times, they would be gone completely, and it would be an exact rectangle. Sometimes I get them to cut them in half again, other times I don't, I think the point is made, and at this point I take one of these shapes, and I would blue tack it to the whiteboard. And once your learners have got this in front of them and they've arranged this and they can see and, and agree that it's a rectangle or rectangular and that if you continue to cut each of these sectors in half and rearrange them, uh, eventually you would have a pure rectangle. Well, then you want to remind them or show them that this side of the rectangle is the radius and the radius is synonymous with the height. You know, in terms of the formula for working out a rectangle or a square, which is base times height, they can see that the radius and the height are actually the same thing here. Same thing goes for the length, or the base I should say, half of the circumference. 
So that line from one side to the other is exactly half of the circumference. And that's the same as the base. So the base times height would give you the area of a rectangle, and the radius times half the circumference will give you the area of a circle. So what you've done is you've rearranged a circle into a rectangular shape, and you can just apply the same formula to it. So radius times half the circumference is the area, and base times height is the area of a rectangle. Once the learners are getting their heads around that and beginning to think about it, the idea is you draw comparisons between these two. They're really the same thing. And at the end of that discussion, you'll realize the learners need to be able to work out what half of the circumference is. That's the main thing. And we've already addressed that in developing an understanding of Pi, one of the other resources. And I would suggest you go and have another look at that uh, so your learners are certain about Pi and understand what the Pi idea really is. So to find the circumference, is 2 times pi times radius. That would give you the full circumference of a circle. Now, if we wanted to find half of that, we can just remove that too. So we can just have the pi times radius, and that'll give us half of the circumference. So that's our base measurement. And we're going to times that by the radius. Now, the formula is just an elegant way of writing this. All they've done is they've squared the radius instead of timesing it by itself. So the formula in an end is an elegant way of doing what we have done in the long way. So pi times radius squared is actually reconstructing that circle in a rect into a rectangle and working it out. But of course the learners never see that and often they're a little bit overwhelmed with the formula but have no underpinning understanding of how to work it out. In my experience, using this uh, activity with the learners a couple of times gives them a whole lot of extra tools that they can draw on to work out the area of circles and begin to understand it and therefore avoid the confusion around applying the formula. With your learners, you want to recap the method of finding the area of a rectangle. That is the base times height and begin to talk about that and make sure they understand that. And then you're going to get them to reformat a circle into a rectangle so that they can see that a circle can simply be cut into sectors and rearranged into a rectangle. And if you want to continue cutting those sectors into half, go and do that by all means. But you need to convince them that it can turn into a rectangle in the end. And then link the method of finding the area of a rectangle to the method of finding the area of a circle. And this will give your learners skills and they'll be able to independently apply this later on in their lives. And as for the hack, the hack is simply this. Instead of sitting up and cutting out paper circles, Go to the shop and buy paper plates, cheap paper plates that learners can fold and then cut up. Perfect.